Hi, I'm Sarah Kate Ellis, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. My name is Aiden Dowling, and my pronouns are he, him, and his. My name is Stacy Stevenson, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Hi, I'm Devin Gibby. I am he, him. My definition of family is people who have love for one another and show up for one another and have committed to creating a bond that lasts a lifetime. People have biological families, chosen families. People create families in all different ways. I think family is home, family is comfort. Family doesn't have to be people who you're related to, just a group of people where you can be your full self and where you can find unconditional support. It can be as narrow as me and my two kids and as broad as, you know, my extended family, my close friends who I would consider family, and even like the greater LGBTQ community at large. You can use it so many different ways. It didn't come into focus for me until later on in life because of being gay and not having role models. Growing up as a girl, you are just told that you're gonna have a family. And for me, it was just kind of always something that I always knew I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to have a home when I was older that was full of love. I've always been someone who uh, loved kids, loved being around kids. And if I think back to when I was younger and I pictured marriage, I did picture myself with kids. When I was 10, my little sister was born and I was like, so eager to care for her. I like slept under her crib as, as a little kid because I wanted to be the one to wake up and, and like rock her when she cried at night. So I don't know, it's just kind of something I always knew I wanted to be a dad. My wife and I decided to start a family of our own about eight years into our relationship. We felt that we had had that needed couple time and now we felt that we were strong enough and that we built a foundation in which to bring children into. I mean, I'd always known growing up, I wanted to become a father. The only option really presented to me as a very conservative Mormon boy was that of marrying a woman and that was the path I took. I was definitely questioning my sexuality and struggling with that, but it wasn't until my second son was born that I really began to address that. It, it happened when it happened, and I, and I have no regrets about becoming a father the way that I did. I wanted to create a family with someone else. My now wife and I, we talked about starting a family pretty early on, and especially for two women to have a family, you have to plan. We had our son when I was 31. Growing up as a young lesbian, I always knew I wanted to have a family. My wife, she was like, let's do it. Let's have this baby we've been talking about for the last eight years. So that was just kind of like, you know, it's not my body. So if she's ready, this is something I want to do anyway. You know, you think, oh, okay, now we're ready. Give us the baby. And it doesn't quite work that way. It actually takes quite a while. A year and a half into it, a miscarriage later, and we decided we should both start trying because we have two ovens. We're looking for one bun. And as soon as we both started trying, we both got pregnant on the exact same day. So when we decided to have children, it was difficult. We tried fostering, uh, we're getting into the foster program. We tried in vitro. Once we found a doctor, we went through several rounds and that did not work at all. So then we went the adoption route. We found a company that accepted LGBTQ couples and that's how um, our twins, uh, Duke and London, came into our, our lives. It was shocking when I first found out uh, that I was going to be a dad, but also really exciting. When we had our first, he was such a good baby. We were like, why would we not have another one? <laughs> we spent our last dollar on the last insemination that we had saved to try to get pregnant, and it worked. So it was the very unsure time, but I think it only made us just so grateful to be able to have this child. biggest influence has been on letting my kids be who they are and not who I think they should be. Having a family wasn't guaranteed for me, whether I was a lesbian or a transgender man. And I think that makes me feel really grateful in a way that 
maybe somebody who was able to just kind of get pregnant, they might not have that same gratitude to have the family of your dreams. Being LGBTQ has taught me self-love and it's enabling me to pass that on to my kids. I'm more intentional about creating spaces where my sons see people who look like them or parents who look like their parents. I definitely believe it takes a village to raise a child. My brother, Matthew, he helps us. My mom, when things are okay, um, she's always been there before everything went down. A lot of my village is in, online too. Being able to share stories in such a manner that you feel okay and you feel like a human because for us like this is our first time having a baby so we don't have any reference first and foremost i've, I've got my wife and her husband and there's school teachers church leaders there's my family and then there's also my close friends interacting with my kids bringing them treats spoiling them you know we live in a wonderful town so we have a lot of friends here and we all look out for each other chris and i still have our parents and then we have our extended family who we go to Provincetown with every year. There's about seven other families. So we have family, friends everywhere. My in-laws are in our village and my in-laws have been great, especially with COVID and us having to work from home. And we were homeschooling our boys for a little bit, so they were at home. You know, our my in-laws were never accepting of this relationship. So for them to come around in full circle and they're very you know, embracing of our relationship and also their grandkids, is awesome. Our family favorite road trip is annual and it's up to Provincetown. One of my favorite pictures is of our daughter Kate picking sunflowers on the side of the road and giving them to her brother Thomas. We find it to be really special time where the four of us are together and we've learned it's not about getting there fast, it's just about getting there and it's kind of just fun family time, uninterrupted. We drove to my hometown, uh, which is about six hours away. We weren't sure if there were gonna be multiple tantrums because they weren't used to being still for that long. But what made it really awesome is that, you know, we did songs. It gets us out of our element. It's so easy in the day-to-day -day routine to just sort of do what we always do. And for us, when we go on trips, the boys aren't thinking about school, we aren't thinking about work, and we get to really connect with each other in a different way. We do like to take day trips, and we all go to a local waterfall or a, a hike, and it's been really fun with Antler because We've been able to like build a trust, I think, that we can't really get indoors. He is always climbing up some rock that is way too big or jumping and I've got to like catch him or something. I love the relationship he can build with the outdoors. I love the bonding that kind of goes on when he falls or something or hurts himself and then they go to their parent to comfort and give them the love and support. And we can, we get that interaction with him in ways that we can't really do just around the house. By far, our favorite road trip was summer of 2019. We had two weeks before school and just decided to get in the car and drive. <laughs> we ended up doing like a whole road trip through the Northwestern states. There's a lot of ways to connect and make memories together. And that's always been a priority of mine when I have time with my kids because I do share them with my ex-wife. you're never really fully ready to become a parent. And in the end, like, you are exactly what your kids need. I'm telling you, go for it. We are a growing community, and even if you might not see as many queer and LGBT families around as you'd like, you could start being the visibility that our community continues to need. Queer families are amazing and they are yours to create and build. It is the greatest gift. If you want to do it, do it. Uh, and things have gotten significantly better. Um, and I think that the more of our community who want to have kids absolutely should.